big smaller. Then a one dollar bill. Yeah. Ah, keep the change. Thanks, sport. Thanks for helping. I made myself a bet. I bet you'd slam your head on that glass door. In the last power failure, I saw ten of the darndest fools do just that. I sat right here. I think I got a concussion. Either that or a whiplash. <laughs> You're walking up? Only 38 stories. He's been celebrating already. Uh, Mark, darling. Mark. Oh, my Mark. goodness. Oh, Are you all right? Baby. Mark, what's the matter with you? I know what's the matter with him. He walked up. Alice, oh, he walked no, up. He walked. Oxygen. Right away. Huh? Here, let me get you a We keep this here for emergencies. Here, Fred, hold it. Okay. Come on, breathe deep, honey. Breathe deep. Take a More deep breath. Honey, come, come on, on, breathe. I think he's delirious. Here, wait a minute. Let me turn it on. Uh, that better? Deep breath. Uh, you all right? I haven't used this too much. You see, we got it for the smog. The smog? But you're on the 38th floor. You don't get smog yeah. up here. Oh, yeah, we are a long way from the cars, but we're nearer the jet. Hey, Mark, Mark, take it easy. I'll get you a drink. Sit down. Sit on the couch. Here. Sit down. Scotch and soda. I had it waiting for you. Oh. Flat. Dear darling. Alice, there ought to be a, a sign over New York. Dangerous if occupied by more than X amount of people. You're right. Now, why couldn't they have come on before you climbed all those stairs? Because New York doesn't do things like that. It deliberately waited. Alice, I can't live like this. You know, I could have died on those stairs, and my body wouldn't have been discovered until the next blackout. Yeah, I know what you mean. The place is a jungle. 
On my way over here, I got mugged around the ankles by three kids from kindergarten. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I mean, you got to stay here. This is where the gold is. Fred, the gold. There's your gold. I got ten empty pop bottles in there waiting to be returned. That's my savings. Well, that's it. I'm leaving. They can close the tunnel. I'm never coming back. You mean we're going to buy the island? By hook or by crook. Oh, it was what, empty pop bottles? I'll find a way. Look. There it is. It's just waiting for us. Where? Out there. Where? There. Well, I don't see any island. Well, well naturally, you don't see it. You don't think I'd move to a place that's big enough to be on a map, do you? But, all right, it's there off the coast of Maine, just 300 yards. From, from the, the sweetest, sweetest little fishing village, village straight out of Moby Dick. Dick. All right, all right. <laughs> so you heard it before. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Fred, if I don't do it this time, I hope I'm crushed to death in a, in a subway rush hour. Oh, but Fred, imagine owning your own island, your own government, your own everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alice, they're at it again! Oh, no! Hey, what oh, is God. that stuff? Oh, the people next door put in a modern incinerator. Do you realize we're breathing secondhand garbage? If the strike continues, you open the window, you can get it firsthand. Fred, I gotta lay my hands on some money. Maybe we could buy a garbage disposal and take in garbage. <laughs> Hey, I can get 5000 for my life insurance. Nobody dies up in Maine. It's crazy. You go up there and you'll starve. Did the pilgrims starve? They started out with nothing, and in eight months they invented Thanksgiving. It's cheap up there. It costs a lot less to starve. <laughs> you mean you just go up there and wing it? Yeah. We'll farm fish. We'll get by. Ooh, the cake. You know, you're, you're making me wish I was almost as crazy as you are, <laughs> Fred, you're crazier. You're, you're staying here. Happy birthday, darling. I had to use all the candles for the blackout. Great. I'm old enough to light up a room. Next year, honey, the candles are on the cake. Right. Yeah, oh, by the way, Helen says happy birthday. Oh, thank Is you. Is Helen still down at the magazine? Yeah, yeah, she's still trying to be the next Helen Curly Brown. Hey, Mark, remember when I got married? I was going to the Art Students League. I was going to be the greatest sculptor since Michelangelo, and then I found out that even Michelangelo couldn't keep a wife in New York. Fred, we're talking about how I can raise some money. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I still feel there's a sculptor in me just crying to get out. Fred, you're not a sculptor. You're an advertising man. Now, how do I buy my island? I'll bet I have more life insurance than you have. I could get $150 a month just by subletting my apartment. Are, are you saying you want to go with us? I hate the advertising business. The doctor says my blood contains 25% smog by volume, and why shouldn't I go? What? We could make it. I mean, the four of us. Yeah. Well, we could, we could, we could start a new art colony, a new state, a new country. Oh, should I stop the newspaper deliveries? Yes, yeah, stop the newspapers! Yeah, ah! Stop them! <laughs> <laughs> All I have to do is tell Helen! Yeah! Oh, Helen! Oh, Helen will love it! Live on an island! Oh, darling, you're not serious. Yeah. But we already live on an island. Manhattan Island. Right. And with Alice? You want us to live with Alice? She's a very sweet girl. Oh, darling, I know she is. She's my best friend and I love her, but you're talking about being marooned with her. There's no meaning to our lives here. Did you ever ask yourself why you spend almost every waking hour at that magazine? Yes, yes, I ask myself that all the time. And do you know what the answer is? I love it. Oh, and I love you too, darling. Oh, you sweet thing. Oh, love. Why couldn't you just join some art class and go down and sculpt a couple of nights a week? Helen. Oh, but in the island, I mean, think of the bugs. <laughs> you fainted butterflies. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I yes, don't. You no, do. I don't. Now, you see, that's exactly my point. New York City is splitting us in two. Maybe we get up to Maine. We can find ourselves again. We can neck and tippy old canoes and make love on sandy beaches. Oh, darling, that's why we got married, so we wouldn't have to. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now, isn't this better than some sandy old beach, huh? Huh? Come on, honey, I'm sorry about last night. But you fell asleep 
while you were still talking. Yeah, well, I got this habit of dozing off at 2 o'clock in the morning. Maybe we should get a larger bed. You can join us. I tell you, it's the last time I pick up a phone after 8 o'clock at night. And another... Oh. Oh. What's the weather prediction? Sunny. Followed by Cher. Oh, that's very humorous. I loved it. Oh, my love, you are going to forget about the island, aren't you? I mean, you're a very complex, civilized human being. Can you imagine how miserable you'd be without great restaurants and the theater and, and the clothes? The clothes thing alone would freak you out. Oh, that just shows how much you know about me. You know what I'd be happiest in? No, what? A sweatshirt and a pair of blue jeans. I wonder if we can get one of those that runs on kerosene. I've made a decision. Oh, brown coat and gray trousers, hmm? Helen, I love you very much. But if you don't go to this island with me, I'm going alone. He wants you to quit? Where is he? I'll have him killed. Why does everybody want to move to a small town? Tell him to wait two years, New York will be a small town. But of course, you don't want to go. I have a choice, Mike. My job or my husband. Compromise. Give up your husband. Oh, Mike. What would you say if I told you that I love him? I'd throw up. No, I won't let you do it. I, I won't let you give up your career so he can play Robinson Crusoe. I'm hey, in two weeks, he'll lose the crease of his trousers and he'll be back home. And then what? And I don't then, know and then what? Excuse me, Miss Clark, but the bishop's on the phone. He wants to know what direction the interview should take. The the bishop? Oh, yeah, right. Um, tell him it's just the usual pillow talk slant, you know, like, um, is there a sex life after death, or will you meet your ex-husband in the hereafter? You know, something like that. Yeah, the usual roundup story of heaven with a slight <laughs> top on. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Helen, here's something else. I tell you, you can find sex in the most incredible subjects. I just think that the pillow talk readers have a right to know if heaven is, well, really heaven. No, no, it, it's sheer genius. And I don't want to see it buried in some down east Alcatraz. Oh, for Pete's sake, Mike. Look at the job some people have given up for love. For example, uh, the Duke of Windsor. He gave up a perfectly lovely, steady job as king. No, you can't quit. Forget it, forget it. Mike, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm sorry. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right you have to go. But, but you don't have to quit. I don't know what you're I'll, I'll call about. it a leave of absence, and maybe you can write something for us up there. Oh, sure. Like um, sex among the seaweed or something like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We'll run it under another name. You don't have to sever connections, and he'll never know. Secretly? Are you kidding? Do you remember what happened when he found out that I'd written about our honeymoon? He punched me in the nose. Yeah. I don't know why. We made him sound like the Paul Bunyan of the water bed. He's a very private person. Helen, you've got to take this job for your husband. You've got to write these articles. When this whole thing blows over, at least one of you will have a job. Please. Okay. Bless you. Okay, it's a deal. Well, start going down to the beach every day and looking for a whiskey bottle with a manuscript in it. We could have just been tourists. Oh, not these days. Tourists get the East Ketchum and they just roll up their windows and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'm May Brody. Mark Selby. Fred Clark. <gasps> Helen Clark. <gasps> Alice Selby. 
<laughs> Hi, they don't change colors. Oh, they don't change color? Well, there you are. Say hello to your mouth. Um, uh, Ma'am, you're eating a used jawbreaker. Waste not, want not. What is that? Oh, these are squid and blood worms and night crawlers. Huh. We can make a terrific fish chowder, huh? Honey, now that stuff is covered. Where are we going to get our groceries? Right here. <laughs> if it walks, swims, flies, or crawls, we got it. <laughs> uh, oh, honey, look at that cute post office. Um, oh, hey. 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 Yeah. These are the folks that bought skelly bones. Hi. Oh, glad to have you. Four more families, we got a zip code. Oh. <laughs> what do you want to move in here for? Last fella moved in here, turned out to be an axe murderer. Chopped his wife into 22 even pieces. Shipped her through the mail. Each package the exact same weight. Don't know how he done it. Oh, Hank, you got no cause to be so nosy. The only reason he'd become a mailman was so he could read the postcards. And now he not only reads them, he's beginning to answer them. <laughs> What's our address here? Number one, Atlantic Ocean. Number one, Atlantic Ocean? That's beautiful, honey. It's poetic. This is the town dock. This is where all the boats come in. When fishing's good. Yeah. Right now, it ain't so good. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Ah, pretty, huh? Yeah, what's that big pile of stuff there? Hi there. What you got in here? Hot lobsters. Well, that would be $2. Uh. First one I sold this week. Oh, no, it didn't scare me. <laughs> this is my daughter, April. Biggest darn tomboy. Tomboy? Tomboy. <laughs> well, you never get drafted, that's for sure. <laughs> April, these folks is from New York. Just bought Skelly Boat Island. New York? I, I never met anybody from New York. Um, I hope you folks like living in Skelly Bone. Oh, I'm sure we will. Well, there's your island. There's our island, Fred. Believe it? We're finally here? Hey, we escaped. We got out of New York. We got out! Ah. Is that the Atlantic Ocean? Yep. Oh, I thought it'd be bigger. Hey, is there a ferry? Oh, yeah. That's the ferry. sink his roots. Oh. <laughs> yes, the cemetery that goes with the house. 
You mean we have our own cemetery? Yes, yeah, save your fortune. Fred, you can't get that in New York, no matter what you pay for a house. Now, wait a minute. Why does this place need its own cemetery? Deceased of cholera. Taken by the Black Plague. Of smallpox, along with his beloved wife. Oh, isn't that cute? Beloved wife. Cholera? Black Plague? Smallpox? We better go back and get shots. Boy, the wives around here last about as long as a washing machine. Hey, hey, come on. I want you to see the house. Yeah, yeah come on. Come on. The whole thing's pretty. Wait a minute. Wait! Here it is. Oh. Wow. Hi. Yeah. Oh, wow. Really beautiful. Come on. Oh, come on, hurry up. Oh, okay. Okay. Ooh, look at here. Hey, hey, come on. I want you to see in here. Well, we uh, sure have a lot of space here. How are we going to clean it all up? How about an atomic bomb? Hey, that's Herbie. He's, he's fixing the generator. Oh, wait a minute. Herbie's like some kind of a genius. Oh, um, they, they won't work. All the electricity in the house comes from that one old generator. This is Herbie. Oh, howdy. Hey, how's the generator coming, Herbie? Oh, uh, good for 20 years old. 20 years old? Do you think you'll be able to fix it? My work's all guaranteed for a year. Everything but parts and labor. Right now, I'm uh, loosening the rest. Oh, hey, hey, multiply a number for him, Herbie. Give him any two numbers. Mm, 569,245 by 1,522. 327,493,734. I'll be getting back to my work now. Can repairmen in New York multiply like that? Better. You should see their bills. You don't happen to know what the old whalers did for bathrooms. It's outside. Outside? Mm -hmm. Oh, darling. What? You promised me that there was inside plumbing. Oh, it's inside. Um, it's inside this little house. Only the house is outside. We have bathrooms upstairs, too. Yes. Only they don't work till the generator gets the electric pump working. Mm. I'll come with you. I want to wash up. <laughs> it ain't exactly equipped with water. Yeah. Hey, and don't worry about the spiders. I have a funny dad. Oh, it's a bundling board. It used to be in the parlor. Um, in the old days, there was no heat. So when young folks was courting, they'd get in the bed so they wouldn't freeze. Oh, and this board here was to make sure they didn't do nothing. They chopped them apart? That's terrible. Honey, it didn't chop them apart. It just kept them apart in the first place. That's worse. Ain't it beautiful? This old stove eats anything. Wood, paper, even trash. Well, it's beautiful. All it needs is a little elbow grease. Well, it's got every other kind. <laughs> Squirrel in the icebox. That's good luck. A little soap and water will do wonders. <laughs> well, we've got the soap. That's one out of two. Well, there's a hand pump out back. Honey, you'll be able to cook up a storm here. Your readers are top dead if they ever saw you in a kitchen like this. Hey, did you folks bring any, any flashlights? Oh, yeah, yeah, but... Oh, they're in the car. I can't seem to find any candles. Uh, we better get some rushes. Dark comes awful fast. Rushes? Yeah, come on. Rushes. 
In colonial times, people couldn't afford candles, so they, they used rushes. All you do is, here, hold it, is dip them in fat like this, and you light them. Anybody got a match? Yeah, yeah, I got one. Here. Ooh. Hey, isn't this wild, Helen? We're actually going back to pre-colonial days. It's just what I've always wanted, a house without one single convenience. <laughs> of all the luxuries in New York, do you know the one I miss the most? What? Candles. <laughs> oh, honey. Ooh. You look beautiful by rushlight. And look at that romantic canopy up there. Probably needs a vacuuming. Oh, Helen, you're going to love it here. No neighbors, and no boss, no 10 million readers in bed with us. Just you and me. And a hungry mosquito. There's the ringleader. This has been the most perfect day of my life. If you put one more rock on that island, you'll sink it. Rock? This is a flawless piece of Maine granite. Now, please, try not to scratch it, huh? Don't worry. We'll just ease it right into the boat. OK, good, good. Uh, huh? in a garden. Oh, oh it's beautiful. <laughs> All right, Jim. Give her another yank. <laughs> what happened? I decided to have my studio in the basement. Mm -hmm. you work. It's just that sitting still like that has me climbing the walls, you know? I guess I just got so used to running around when I was working on pillow talk. Pillow talk? Yeah. yeah. I almost forgot about pillow talk. Yeah. Kind of wish you had, too. Well, almost. I think of it every now and then.
my little thinking place. Ah, it's a nice spot. Uh, what are you writing? Oh, um, I was just writing a letter to a friend, a shut-in. Oh, I, I thought it might be for Pillow Talk. How did you know that I worked for Pillow Talk? Well, Hank, the, the postman, told me that you got this letter in the mail from Pillow Talk magazine and, and that your name was typed on instead of printed like it was just to a subscriber. So I looked in an old copy and there was your name. Oh. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I was an editor of Pillow Talk, but I quit. You quit? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, that's awful. Why? Well, well that, that magazine has helped me so much, and I... Well, if it weren't for that magazine, I, I could never have become a woman. Like, I could sure use it right now. Uh, you've got a problem? What do you do when you love a man, and you can't even get him to notice you? I guess that depends on whether or not you're married to him. He's married to someone else. Look, there's an upcoming article in Pillow Talk that deals with just that. Oh, I, I don't get Pillow Talk anymore since fishing ain't so good. I tell you what, the publisher's a friend of mine. He could send you a subscription if you like. Oh, yes. I... And then maybe you'd do me a favor, huh? Yes, anything. <laughs> okay. My husband likes to sculpt, and he likes me to pose for him, right? But when I do it, I have to sit on a stool and I have to sit absolutely still. Fine. It's all squiggly. Huh? It's all squiggly. <laughs> it was sure nice of your wife to let me take her place. How do you ever make that big stone into a statue of me? Huh? Oh, that's easy. I just chop out all the parts that don't look like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I guess I ain't supposed to move, huh? No, no. It's okay. Move, move. I mean, you're not a statue. You're a living, breathing girl. Oh. Make it Stovlin hotcakes. Stovlin hotcakes? Put me down for a couple of dozen. You're cooking on spit. I gotta make sure it's hot enough. You're worse than a garbage strike. Hey, something smells awful good. Yeah, you want some? I don't eat it. You know what he did? He spit on the stove and he poured batter all over it. <laughs> oh, it hurt you. I've been doing that all my life. Where's the cereal? Oh. <laughs> We've been picking berries. They're absolutely fantastic. I never tasted anything like them. Not even in New York. And they're so convenient, you don't even have to thaw them. Here. with Herbie banging away down there. Oh, look at this. Sax is having its January white sale. In July? Oh, well, it's an old paper. Fred shoes were wrapped in it. Alice, have you ever been in the ladies' room in Saks Fifth Avenue? I don't think so. Oh, you'd remember. First of all, it's indoors. And then it's got these things that hot and cold water come out of. Faucet? Yeah. Hey, how about a movie, huh? I don't feel like going 40 miles to see a 30-year-old movie. We only have to drive 30 miles to see a 40-year-old movie. I think Herbie's getting more rhythm.
got her set too fast. Uh, Back to the 18th century. You have glass in your hair. Oh, oh they were 30-watt bulbs. <laughs> Well, I thought it was a little tap for the generator. I think I got her. Hey! Hey! Hey, uh, what's that now? Now, that's the water tank on the roof filling out. Oh. What? Hey! Oh, water! Hey! Who wants a glass of pure ice-cold rust? But it is ice-cold. It's better than nothing. I've been brushing my teeth with soda pop. The invention of electricity. Bathroom. Yeah, bathroom. Oh, 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 ah, the farmer gets the power. The, the farmer, farmer gets, gets the power. power. I hold the dairy. Oh, the farmer gets the power. That one for me. The farmer gets the power. The farmer gets the power. Oh, to young Tom Edison. Ah! Who's he? <laughs> to the two greatest wives in the world and the most beautiful model. You oh, betcha. To the people of the mainland. Yeah. Yeah. And to the best neighbors a man ever had. Oh, boy. Yeah. 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 What is it? It's a tax bill. What? A tax bill. Tax? Yeah. For sewer and water and schools and roads and welfare. For the past 20 years. How can that be? They want us to pay 20 years of taxes? Yeah, well, apparently it was in the agreement we signed. It's a lot of money? Well, it's a lot more than we got. It means those good neighbors of ours on the mainland are taking our island away from us. Sending from Long John Silver, both of us. Why, well, uh, I thought that stuff was in books. Go on, go on up here. <coughs> Take your place there. No, the author copied them from my great, great, great granddaddy. Come on up here in the poop deck, son. Watch it! You know, a tax collector can't be too careful. Sit down. Sit down, I tell you. <clears throat> I guess you're wondering. Now, I lost my leg, huh? Wales got it. Wales? Uh, yeah. Fell down in front of a trolley car in Wales, England. <laughs> I guess you're wondering about them taxes, eh? Uh, yes, sir. You, you've charged us for 20 years back taxes. You promised to pay them. When you signed that deed, you promised to pay all the back taxes right there in the fine print. Well, that's it. See, we, we didn't read the fine print. You didn't, huh? Well, let me tell you something, son. The smaller the print, the bigger the reason to read it. Yes, but, uh, Captain Coffin, you... I mean, you got us down here 
for a road tax, uh -huh. a sewer tax, and a water tax. Uh -huh. But we don't have any roads or water or sewer. You know, well, that's lucky for you. Otherwise, we'd have had to charge you more. <laughs> I get so wondering, how many generations of coffins have followed the sea, ain't you? Ain't you? None of them. My whole family has been in the pawnbroking business for over 200 years. The fellow that owned this boat lost his ticket to my granddaddy. I'm the first one to break out of the business. Kind of sorry I did. About the taxes. I tell you, the only thing of value that they don't tax in this town is my leg. Well, I can imagine they tax a wooden leg. Oh, they'd tax it all right if they could. I tell you, the only way that you're going to get relief from them taxes is to go to a town meeting. A New England town meeting? Ah, that's right, the old American way. You get up there and you speak your mind, son. Then all we have to do is go down there and just, just tell them what happened. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's the first Monday of every month. Great, thanks. That's right, but I wouldn't hope too much hope there for you, though, boys. I never met anybody who would vote to take the taxes off the other fella. <laughs> What the heck are you doing? Some people collect butterflies. I collect mosquitoes. Mark. Hmm? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I don't know what you're thinking. Well, I don't think we ought to rely on a town meeting. Mm-hmm. I think we all better go out and get a job. Yeah, I think we need a little money. Hey, you're right. Why don't we all go into town and try to get jobs? Like, I could, uh, I, I could try to get a job on the local paper, no? Yeah. Right. It's a terrific idea. And you know what? What? No, I mean, well. Come on. I'd like to, I'd like to go down and get a job on one of those fishing boats. That's a great idea. And, uh, you don't think Why that's not? nuts? I mean, no, it's got to be oh, something to do for, a, for an ad agency man in a town this size. Huh? Yeah, I mean, like a relation. No way to go but up, right? <laughs> I, I, I used to work for a bank. I mean, you never forget how to count. <laughs> bank? We ain't got a bank. Anytime anybody gets any money, they use it to leave town. I don't know nothing about advertising, but you might get a job shucking oysters. Of course, that don't start till a month with an R in it. August? Wouldn't be nothing there. All we got is this one tiny newspaper, and it don't amount to much. Everybody in town knows what everybody else is doing. They just read the paper to find out if they got caught at it. Huh? Nope. Bad day at Black Rock. Well, we didn't get anything either. This town has two depressions behind the rest of the country. I was thinking, we have this nice house. Maybe we could take in boarders. We have this nice cemetery. Maybe we could take in bodies. <laughs> Shares, yeah, and my share came to 400 pounds. 400 Please. pounds for one day. No, no, I mean, there's a lot more down at the dock. 400 pounds. Hey, Phil, I saw is a dollar 49 a pound. A dollar 49 times 400. That 400 bucks right off the uh, bat, right? 400 Fred, dollars and 49 times 4. Fred, we can't 36. sell them. Yeah. What? Well, there's mercury in them. Why'd you bring them home? We could eat them, maybe. Mike, listen. I need an advance check on the project, okay? No, but I don't need plain fare home. It's so we can stay. Yes, stay. No, Mike, don't send up your psychiatrist. Could you just send the check? Would you please? Well, you'll know what it's all about when you read the article, okay? Okay, great. You're a love. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. I brought over a letter for your wife. Oh, thanks. Teletalk, huh? <laughs> Postman says it looks like a check, because you can't see no writing through the envelope. Yeah. Well, I'll bet she misses that magazine something fierce. Yeah, I would have thought so, too, but she's got a million new interests. Well, at least she has that shut-in friend to write to. Shut-in friend? 
You lied to me. You said you quit. I did quit. What is this, a note to the milkman? I promised that I would do one more oh, article. Oh, right, one more yes. article. Yes. You're afraid to do it cold turkey. The doctor said you might have withdrawal symptoms. No, not the doctor, the accountant. He said we might go broke, and he was right. Well, you got a great office here. Huh? This is natural wood paneling. Thank you. Real dirt. Oh, pillow talk will love that. And you, you even had to bury it in a hole. I almost wish it had been another man. Oh, well, it's just because I couldn't find a hole big enough. Oh, Fred, for crying out loud, stop playing Hamlet. Let me say something before I'm sentenced. Say. <sighs> Darling, I love you. That's why I came up here. I want you to be a sculptor. I want you to be anything you want to be. And that's why I sent to Mike to send me the check, so that we could stay. You told him you wanted to stay? Of course I did. Ask the postman. He took notes. <laughs> you silly. Aw. I love you. Okay. <laughs> You're too much. What do you say in this silly thing? That's pretty good. These catching women have figures that are simply, oh, wow. I love that. Take Jane Gardner. She has a shape that any 18-year-old might envy, and she's only nine. Yeah. The men are absolutely yummy, lusty, virile, uninhibited descendants of pioneer whalers who are used to taking their women where they find them. <laughs> <laughs> In short, East Ketchum is a paradise for you pillow talk girls. We arrived at the height of the mating season. Some of the more interesting combinations are... You name names. You can't name names. Oh, no, that's fictitious. I mean, I made up all that. Yeah. But this is real. Yeah, I know it is. Just not enough to save the ranch. Mark? Huh? I got bad vibes about this election. Why? But I think the townspeople are going to vote against us. What? These nice, warm people? Never! Oh, well, these nice, warm people are counting on our taxes to keep them nice and warm. No. Helen's check is just not enough to cover the taxes, so I think we're going to have to take a big gamble on it. I don't think we can gamble on not gambling. In, in politics, what do you do when you want a favor from a lawmaker? We don't have enough money to bribe a whole town. <sighs> no. You give a party. A big, fat party that'll make these people friends of yours for the rest of their lives. Or at least until the election. Hmm? <laughs> You'll need uh, oh, yeah. rye and gin and rum and maybe a case of bourbon. Bourbon. And then you'll need something for the men. <laughs> what do they drink? Atomic waste? Hi, honey. Hi, love. Can I go for the party? Oh, yeah, you just look oh, darling. Oh, you're going to the party. What are you, you going to wear? Me? Huh? <laughs> I just take off my apron. I'm ready to go anyplace. <laughs> Come on, honey. Help us carry all this stuff down to the dock. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. I'll give you last one. fragile envelope to fly all the way to New York on the airmail. 
plane will go zoom up, zoom down, zoom up, zoom down. Then she hits in her pocket. Zoom, zoom, zoom. That's a good thing I tested it. It's getting hot. No sign of them anywhere. Well, I wish they'd get here. This punch is beginning to self-destruct. Oh. <laughs> I think we're getting smog. Now, why would a whole village be two hours late to a party? Well, Maybe they lost the address. Wonder how long it takes to eat 2,000 deviled eggs. You land lovers! Sending an invitation for a mud low tide in a full moon? We had to sit there two and a half hours waiting for the tide to come in. Oh. No, Patty's worth that. I brought a present for you. Now, where oh. did I put the darn thing? Lord's Prayer carved on whalebone. Oh. That's fantastic. I'll bet some lonely sailor carved that thousands of miles at sea, huh? No, my maiden aunt did it right on a whalebone corset stay. <laughs> There's the old man on the back there. <laughs> now, this is a whole family project. My husband caught it. Yeah, I caught it. My daughter blew it up and varnished it. And this is my son's pipe. <laughs> Just what we've always wanted. <laughs> we decorated it with sardine can labels. Now, nah, our sardines have all gone to Portugal. Oh, I'm sure they'll come back. It's such a lovely little town. I made this special for you. Oh, thank you so much. It's a pen made out of a seagull's feather. You can write anything with it. You know what I mean? I don't care what name she gave to him in that story. I know my own husband when I read about him. Well, now... If... Don't well now me. I'm saving my trading stamps. And when I get enough to buy a ticket to Bangar, he'll never see me again. Shh. Orders? No, thanks. She says eating them oysters gives us all this amazing virility. Oh, that's an old wives' tale. Well, they should know. <laughs> I don't mind if I do, thank you. <laughs> hey, I think the moisture's is working already. I don't need any magazine writer to tell me how to take care of a husband. I've buried five of my own. Would you like some more, dear? Hey, gang, something's going on out there. There's a real undercurrent. Well, you know, no, yeah, we don't seem to be getting through to those people. And well, they're liable to raise our taxes, you know? Police, the devil, they are almost gone. Well, the postman seems to be the only guy that's having any fun. Yeah. Hey, what are you all hiding in here for? Well, we're trying to figure out a way of getting a little life in the party out there. That's what I come to take. Driest shindig I ever was at. How can you say that? You better do something or they'll turn mean. Dry? There's enough booze out there to float the whole fishing fleet. Yeah. Sure, but they can't take a drink until you do. Helen, come on! Oh, oh, here. To the ladies. To the ladies. Well, to the best neighbors a man ever had. And may we be neighbors for many years to come.
in the moonlight. Oh, my husband might not like it. Your husband doesn't have to come along. <laughs> to reduce their taxes come the town meeting Monday night. Well, why wait for Monday? We could fire up a town meeting right here and now. I mean, the whole town's right here. Yeah, let's vote now. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's fire up a town meeting right now. Ah, it ain't legal. It is legal. Ain't it, Captain? Well, it is if we vote for it. I tell you, the whole town's right here. I ain't gonna vote until I'm sober. Well, then he ain't never gonna vote. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my gavel, will you? All right, now. Everybody in favor of having a town meeting here and now, say aye. Aye! Oppose, no. It's carried. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The official town meeting of the village of East Ketchum is now in session. Now, somebody bring me a little table here, will you? Oh, here you are, Captain. I got you. And Sarah, Sarah, where's Sarah? Sarah here? Sarah, come up and take the minutes, will yes. you? The minutes? Yes. yes. Yes, and we'll dispense with the minutes of the last meeting, and we'll dispense with the Treasury's report. Yes. Well, we're broke anyhow. Yes. Let's get to the taxes. That's the most fantastic thing you ever saw. Democracy in action. Now, you have uh, heard the problem. Do you have any discussion? Yes. Yeah? Uh, well, uh, I, I just wanted to say that uh, I'm sure... Whichever way the vote goes, that it's, it's going to be fair and, and a very wise decision. You're crazy. <laughs> and also that uh, I think it'll be one of the proudest moments in our lives when, when we stand up and cast our vote. You ain't got no vote. I'll sell him mine. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, does, doesn't everybody in a town meeting have a vote? I'm afraid you ain't lived here long enough. Now then, everybody in favor of removing them 20-year-old taxes signify by saying... Somebody don't want us to vote. Uh, don't move. Hold your places. Lights will be on in a minute. Charlie, the generator was out of gas. Yeah, we filled her up with booze. Meeting <laughs> come to all. before that generator gets too drunk. <laughs> Wait a minute. I've got something to say. Now, all the trouble this village ever had come from outsiders. And you all know this village once done real good hunting whale for whale oil until some dang fool invented gaslight. And you know what that did to whaling. Harpooned it. <laughs> right. And then the Pope come along and says, folks don't have to eat fish on Fridays. Now, this is pretty surprising, considering that the first pope was a fisherman. <laughs> right. And now, them dang fool scientists say there's mercury in the fish. Maybe we can sell them for th thermometers. Shut up, Chef. <laughs> now, everything bad that's happened to this town come from outsiders. And this here set of outsiders don't want to pay their taxes. Well, I say, they made plenty of money from them dirty magazines. And I say, make them pay! Yeah. Now it's out in the open, 
I don't like what that woman wrote in that magazine piece. No. 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 That woman makes us sound like sex fiends. Well, if folks believe we have that much fun, we'll be up to our scuppers in tourists. We won't be safe on the streets. Hmm? We're lucky. <laughs> now, these four folks ain't rich, like you think. They're four poor geese who might just lay us a golden egg if you let them stay. But if they leave, old Skellybone might sit around for another 20 years waiting for another dang fool. Oh, right. Listen, listen, please. Now, the village has had bad luck. There's no doubt of that. But I think it's a tribute to your courage, your perseverance, that you're all still here. We ain't got the money to get out. Yeah. Wait a minute. You got your whole lives ahead of you, a whole new life. Uh, you people are creative and, and you're gifted. I mean, take, for instance, those presents you gave us. Uh, uh, the Lord's Prayer, uh, carved on a corset stay, and uh, uh, a blowfish with a pipe in his mouth. Handicraft like that can be sold all over the world. And our little group here is, well, we've taken the first step in making the village world famous. Now, all we have to do, or all you have to do, is, is vote to lower the taxes so we can stay here. And I'd like to take you this opportunity to show you a piece of art that I think will spread the fame of this village all over the world. It's of uh, one of your local beauties, April. April, I wish you'd come up and unveil this for us. Just put it on top, yeah. is too much a part of me. It's not for sale. It's yours as a gift. For nothing? That's right, for nothing. Oh, no, I, I couldn't accept a beautiful piece of art like that for nothing. I insist. It's a gift from the new Skellybone Arts and Crafts Colony. Well, now, that's very generous of you. All right. Let's get on with that bull. All them in favor of taking off them terrible taxes, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Well, I, I can't tell from that. We'll have to record the vote. Record, record the vote. All right, Charlie Erickson. Mr. Charlie Erickson votes no. <laughs> no. Uh, Mrs. Madeline Erickson. Charlie doesn't leave me any choice. Madeline Erickson votes yes. Yes. I uh, Rose Malone. I don't understand the question. And now, last but not least, Kirk LeCount. Uh, I vote yes. Oh, what's the tally, Sarah? Sarah, the tally. Yes, yes. It is my official duty to inform the townspeople that by a narrow margin of the two votes. Now, where did I put that? Now, Sarah, hurry up. I'll stomp you with my wooden leg. Oh, yes. Uh, by a um, um, narrow margin of two votes, the motion is... the yes. mo now, 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 I have the actual figures right here. The motion is defeated. They've uh, got to pay them taxes. <laughs> I guess we won't be spending too many more nights here. You notice? There are no mosquitoes. I was up here for an hour, swatting and spraying. Thought I'd make 
make some stove lit hotcakes for last time. Oh, honey. Oh. It's okay. How about some eggs? Okay. Yeah, I'll hear those people laughing for the rest of my life. Oh, Mark, you can't expect everyone to understand Impressionism. Good art should be able to reach out and touch savages. Well, cheer up, old buddy. We're having hotcakes. Hey! That was hot enough. We're gonna be paying for an island we don't own for the rest of our lives. How much do we owe? How much do we owe? I wonder if I could talk to you for a second. Sure. Um, you know, I voted against you last night, but I could vote for you at the town meeting Monday. But uh, I'll need a little favor. I've got to have one of them statues. You'd change your vote for a statue? Yeah. Me too. You. <sighs> well, that's the two votes we need. We can stay. We can Yay! Oh, love, isn't it marvelous how all these people love your work? Yeah, I must have touched some primitive need for beauty. Yeah. You're going to be the new Grandma Moses. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you could give us the original sculpture, sir. We want to make some castings. No, sir. Down here, a gift's a gift. Oh, we'd give it right back. Well, maybe tomorrow I'll bring it over to Skellybone for you. Ah, oh, you don't want to let it go. No, ma'am. Well, he's probably built the whole cabin around it. C can we have it now, Captain? We've got to deliver a couple of copies by Monday. All right. Well, you're a darn nuisance. Go on, take the mid watch, boy. I'll get it for you. There you are. <laughs> probably keeps it outside where everybody can admire it, huh? <laughs> Yeah, the best hold an anchor ever had. Breaks out of the mud easy, too. read about in Pillow Talk magazine. Uh, that sure is. And they didn't tell you about the half of it. Go right in. Oh. Don't be afraid there. Go right in. Tuesday night, see the premiere episode of a brand new hospital drama series. It's called St. Elsewhere, and it's won heaps of awards in America. If you like Hill Street Blues, you'll really enjoy St. Elsewhere. It's a hospital drama series that's true to life. It's so realistic, you'll watch it week after week. St. Elsewhere, Tuesday night at 8.35 on NBN.